how to operate in a crisis. We've already experienced one major crisis in 2020, right? That was social, dis social distance, pandemic, COVID breakout, shutdowns, stimulus checks, all this stuff. But now we're not even, we're not even through with it yet. We're still in that, right? And we're managing, we're learning how to operate. But now you gotta prepare for the next move, which is market crash, okay? You are in a bubble, okay? You are about, to, we're about to experience hyperinflation. I want to say about over 20% of the US dollar, right? The dollar, 20% of all the money that has ever been printed in the United States of America from the time of its birth up until this point, 20% or more, I believe, has been printed in under a year, in the last year, from like March 2020 up until this point, and we're printing more, okay? What does that mean for the average kingdom citizen in this environment here? And the, the people who are with me right now, the people who are doing velocity banking, you're doing debt snowball, you're doing velocity banking, infinite banking put together. You're trying to pay off your debt. Maybe you're starting a business. You're paying off debt and starting a business. You're trying to get your finances in order. Whatever level you're at, how can I pivot, operate, and if I had a crystal ball and I know that the, that the market is about to crash, the current economic environment we are in is about to burst, how do I, ask this question to yourself, how do I operate and pivot so that I can not only be prepared for when it comes, but also thrive, like grow, expand. You want to have that mindset. You don't want to go hide in a cave and wait it out, right? We want to be able to look at a crisis as an opportunity, as a once in a lifetime opportunity to drastically change your financial situation, your entire kingdom, okay? So on the board, I have a situation. I'm going to share with you um, one of my client's numbers. Um, I'm going to take you back when I first spoke to them and then a recent conversation I had with them, looking at the numbers, sharing a win, sharing with you what they're doing to pivot, prepare, and expand in a crisis or in a market crash. And then I'm also going to share with you how I would operate if I had to start all over again. Right. So let's say like going back to when I was making, you know, a, a 35K a year salary. So if I was on a 35K a year salary with all the information and knowledge and wisdom and experience that I know now and I had to start it all over again and I know a crash is coming, what are the things that I'm going to be doing to prepare, um, be effective with my time, but expand, take advantage of the opportunity, take advantage of different things that I can do to explode my business or explode my finances to 10x. So on the board here, I have an individual I worked with back in June of 2020. Now this person, I have to correct myself, is not yet an official client. I did one, they paid for one consultation back in 2020 for one hour and I spoke to them. Now, in that time, they were actually, this particular person was not actually ready to start Velocity Banking. So instead of taking the full hour, I said, listen, let's cut this into 30 minutes and let me give you some practical steps to get yourself started and then you can hit me up at any time for the other 30 minutes so that you get the full 
value of what I can you know, offer and, and bring to the table. So that's what we did in June 2020, had a 30 minute conference, conversation he paid for an hour. His numbers were this, income 6,931, expenses 6,477 and 71 cents. Their total debt was $177,076.75. Their cash flow was $453.29, okay? Fast forward, we've got six, what, eight months or so that passed. Now, February 17th, 2021, had that follow-up 30-minute call. From the first time we spoke up until today, I want to share with you all the wins that he achieved. Number one, his income increased to 7,500. His expenses decreased, 6,105. His debt actually went up. That's a bit odd, Denzel. I'm surprised you're sharing that details. That usually doesn't happen on your channel. What's up with that, right? And I'm here to tell you, it's not all, it's not always a fairy tale, right? It's not always gonna be sweet. You know, 2020 was rough for this particular situation. This person did pay off quite a bit of debt, but then they accumulated a certain kind of debt to help them do some things, but then they also um, were, were leveraging debt to start their business. So that is why the number was 177, then it went up to 181, okay? But notice how their cash flow, even in the midst of debt rising, their cash flow went up to 1,395. These are still wins, okay? So for this person, they're not looking at this number as a negative, as if they went backwards. No, they actually went forward. And here are the wins that I wanna share with you. From when we first spoke, they did not have a debt tool, which is why they weren't ready for Velocity Banking anyways. Um, their cash flow was pretty low. They didn't have the right credit. There were 600s and very low 600s, so they had to do a lot of work, okay? First thing, they managed to acquire a secured personal line of credit for 11,500 at a 5% interest rate. So they acquired their debt tool in this time frame. They, this person paid off 11 credit cards, okay? and they reduce other debts on their installment loans. They increase their credit score from the low 600s to low 700s and you know, like 720. Um, and that was the main thing that they really had to work on. This person established an LLC. Talk about a New Year's resolution. Did it right on January 1st, 2021. Bam, getting, getting certified, right? Business owner. They acquired their notary license. So they're going to be issuing, I think, uh, loans or, um, you know, that stamp thing that you do when you have to get something uh, notarized. There you go. That was the word I was looking for. So they got that to increase their income even more, have a second stream. Uh, this person is a uh, registered nurse. Um, they have one year left on they're psych nurse practitioner. So I'm not sure if he's already a nurse, but I know he's in the, in the health, uh, he's a healthcare worker. That, that's the industry that um, this person is in, okay? So these are the wins, right? And then um, as of now, 2021, we're in February, it's February 18th. Yep, it's February 18th and they're doing Velocity Banking on the debt tool right now. It's got a bit of a balance on it. So we're doing Velocity Banking. The goal is to chunk by June or sooner. So their next chunk towards debt, uh, they're going to wipe out um, some really important debt that's going to increase their cash flow by $859, which is going to be another win as we move further into 2021. Okay. So this person is not only paying off debt, managing their money, giving, receiving value, investing in, their, in themselves. 
building a business, creating a second stream of income. They're pivoting, they're aligning, they're operating in kingdom principles so that when this market crash does come, they will be positioned properly, okay? And here are some things that I just wanted to share if I was in this person's position or if I was making my 35K a year salary, right? So back in 2018, before I started the YouTube channel, I had a 35K salary and I was a food and beverage manager, okay? That was my, my role, okay? So I know there's a lot of people that follow me that have jobs, careers, um, your income dropped, your income went up, there's all different situations. So I'm pretty much talking to everyone, no matter where you are at financially, although this is gonna hit probably a lot better for those that are, say, making under five grand a year, making under seven grand a year. For those that are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50K a month, you already know a market crash is coming. You already have the information. One YouTube channel I highly, highly recommend, or an individual I highly recommend looking up. His name is Patrick. Bet David has a YouTube channel called Valuetainment and then a podcast called uh, The Bet David Podcast, I believe, or the Patrick Bet David Podcast. All on YouTube. This gentleman. I've recently added to my fantasy league in terms of being informed on information in the economy, politics, finance, really a mixture of everything. Just being totally aware of my environment, how to pivot, how to align, how to operate effectively. So I highly recommend this individual. They recently, uh, Patrick recently put out a video about the next market crash. So if you were to type that in YouTube, you probably would see his video. It's ranking really well right now. He provides about 10 or 11 reasons why he, so I'm not going to try and convince you that a market crash is coming. I've already settled my mind, so I'm not trying to convince you, I'm trying to just show you how I'm operating. So if you wanna go get convinced, you want to go get numbers and stats and things like that check out patrick beck david look up next market crash it's a short quick video he provides 10 or 11 reasons why he this individual who's making hundreds of millions of dollars a year foresees a market crash coming in the near future very very soon right so that's that now coming back to Let's say I was in this situation, making 35 grand a year, which is roughly less than 2,000 a month take home, net. How I would operate in the midst of a crash or in a crisis, right? So I'll, I'll write crash, crisis, my attitude, my way of thinking. The first thing I'm gonna do is redefine my words and language. I wanna make sure that I have the right mindset coming into this, right? So talking to my uh, 55 and up crowd, okay, I know I have quite a few of you that watch me, you're 55 and older, male or female, I think you really need to redefine your words, your language. A big word you need to redefine. If you're around this age and up, and maybe my 50s and 45s, okay? This word, retirement, you've got to redefine this word. I think you have been taught something that is ineffective, okay? I think it's important to really ask yourself, what does retirement actually mean? What is the end result? 
when I turn 59 and a half and I retire or I retire at 65 or 69 or 70, what the heck does that actually mean? Like, does that mean collect Social Security, pension, 401k, and maybe two or three rental properties cash flowing you and you're, you know, you've got this passive income and you're just going to pay bills and die? and um, maybe take a vacation once a year, twice a year, spend Christmas at the daughter's house or son's house. What does it actually mean? If you knew that you had an additional 30 years to live after retirement, an additional 30 years, like if you knew it, 30 years to live after retirement, are you just going to stop working and just like i said pay bills and die take a couple of vacations here or there spend christmas with the kids the grandkids and watch them grow which is all fine and dandy i'm not knocking any of that i'm simply asking is that what you want or can you have all of that and more is there a possibility that you can watch the grandkids grow up that you can see your daughter and son succeed that you can take five or six vacations a year, that you can build a business, go from working for the man or woman, going from working for the man, the woman, and now working for yourself, is that a possibility? So I just wanted to spend a little time on that crowd because I know majority of my audience is roughly 45 years and older. So that was for you redefine your words and language. How are you showing up every single day? The next thing is original intent, right? Really just identifying what was my original intent for being here on planet Earth? What is my original purpose in life? Kind of going back, do I need to look at my history, my culture? What, what is the original design for my, my being, my physical being, why I'm here? And that has to do with answering the four major questions in life. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Where am I going? Okay. The next thing is 90, 90, 90 day rule to create content. You can literally type this in on YouTube. You'll find my video, 90, 90, 90 day rule to create content. Okay. This is one of the best things that has helped me produce a multiple six-figure income and gain access to knowledge and information and wisdom and experiences and partnerships that I would not experience if I stayed here working for the man, working for the woman, right? If I would have stayed here and, and thought small, okay? So to simply go over the 90-90-90 day rule to create content, right? Pretty simple. Um, this has to do with you engaging in the 21st century's marketplace, which is the internet. That is the main driver right now in our economy, the internet. It is big and it's just getting started. People think that it's, you know, although it's been around a while, but it's literally just getting started in terms of momentum and Potential, there is so much potential down the line, it's insane. So in a nutshell, the first 90 days, I simply record. Whatever device I have, whether it's a computer, a webcam, my iPhone, my Android, I don't care. I simply record. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. The objective is to get comfortable in front of the camera, right? Creating video content or audio content, getting comfortable talking to myself in a room, getting comfortable delivering a message to an audience that I don't have yet. Okay. 90 days. All I do is hit the red button. I record. Don't know what I'm going to talk about. 
and I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna block out time, create a schedule, give myself 90 days to produce at least 90 pieces of content. That's the goal. 90 days, 90 pieces of content. It is not hard to do, especially if you're creating, say, short content on maybe TikTok or Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. Whatever your content is, as long as you create the schedule, you say, okay, I'm gonna take the next four hours every Monday and Wednesday, that's eight hours for the next uh, 12 weeks, right? And that'll be 90 days, four times 12 is what? 12, 24, 36, 48. 48 hours to create 90 pieces of content, it is very doable, let me tell you, okay? And it's just a matter of practicing. So 90 days to create the content, all I'm, my firm, my, my whole goal is just create the content. Don't worry about posting, don't worry about editing, don't worry about lighting and audio, just get it going, practice. Take, just keep it going. Right, you can, we can record and edit and fix audio later. We just wanna get the material down. We want to practice, get it going. So 90 days to create. The next 90 days is to plan, schedule, right, process. So the next 90 days, after I've created roughly 90 pieces of content, my goal is to simply now decide what platform am I going to go on. So knowing all the information that I know now about social media marketing, the best places that I want to be, this is my opinion, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Clubhouse. Okay. Notice how I didn't say YouTube and I have a strong YouTube channel at this point. I'm putting myself in this mindset, not my current mindset making 30, 40, sometimes 50, 70K a month. Okay, I'm going back to 35K salary, only netting less than 2,000 a month, working at a job. Where is my time going to be the most effective? Because I'm on a low budget. So right now, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Clubhouse are the best platforms to uh, gain organic reach, where you can literally make a post on TikTok and a lot of strangers will see it. LinkedIn, strangers will see it. Clubhouse, I mean, just hopping into a room, people are gonna be there, you're gonna have their attention, right? These, these platforms are pushing the algorithm in favor of the new content creator. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram is extremely saturated already. You're competing with big time content creators already. So it's going to take quite a bit of time to really get things off the ground. So I'm not saying don't start a YouTube channel, don't start a Facebook, yes, start those things but if you're looking to maximize and be effective, in my opinion, I think TikTok, LinkedIn, and Clubhouse is where you wanna be to attract a lot of attention and then maybe you bring them to your base, which is maybe a Facebook group or your base could be a YouTube channel. It, it just depends, right? Or your base could be LinkedIn or your base could be uh, TikTok. It, it, however it is, people, Eventually, where are you sending them? Typically, it'll be a website, right? So first 90 days record, next 90 days plan, schedule, process. So once I get the material, I have the 90 pieces of content, I now have to edit it, upload it to the different platforms and schedule the posting. Not right away, not right away, but 90 days from that point. Gives you plenty of time to do what I call batching. Gives you plenty of time to batch your content, okay? So first 90 days record, next 90 days plan, schedule, process. The next 90 days is execution. 
you're simply gonna watch your platforms explode and grow over time. And you're gonna be able to evaluate, pivot, get feedback, get comments, things like that. You're also going to establish a consistent schedule, right? So during those 90 days of planning and processing, you could also be recording more if you want, but to keep it simple and not get overwhelmed, you work with what you've created in those first 90 days. You start editing, like I said, uploading to the different platforms, to the TikTok, to the LinkedIn, to the to um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, right? And there are different uh, softwares that you can use to schedule your content way in advance, putting all your hashtags and your description and your title and your thumbnail and your this and your that. You're giving yourself that time so you don't get overwhelmed. Remember, remember, I'm in this mindset here of a worker. I'm a nine to five person. My time is I'm already working, you know, 50 hour, 60 hour weeks. So I don't have a whole lot of time. Okay, I'm in that mindset of a nine to five worker, not successful entrepreneur, you know, making multiple six figures. Different story. Coming back here. And I know this is where a lot of you are at. Nine to five job, you feel like you don't have a lot of time. This is how I create the time and give myself that room. And what I'm not doing is comparing myself to that seven figure entrepreneur that I'm getting my information from, that eight figure, nine figure, 10 figure entrepreneur. I'm not, getting, I'm not comparing myself to that because that's gonna put me in procrastination. I'm gonna get depressed and I'm just gonna feel down and feel like I'm not doing anything. That's gonna be terrible. I'm not looking at that. I'm focusing on how do, we, how do I become a better version of myself, right? How do I become a better me than yesterday, right? That's who I'm competing against, my yesterday self, okay? So plan, schedule, process. And then, you know, the third kind of already went over it, execution, right? So we want to execute on those last 90 days those last 90 days is the least amount of work because it's already planned, scheduled, you got the process set up, you got your thumbnails, your title, your description, your links, your everything. It's already set up. And you're gonna post every single day for 90 days straight. That's one option. Second option is you can say, okay, I'm gonna post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, the way I get around posting every single day, Monday to Friday, is you gotta understand that one video can equal, you know, 10 pieces of content. Can't write. 10 pieces of content. What I mean by that is you could have your Instagram, so you can make your post, you can make one your one video you can have it posted on Instagram, IGTV. On Tuesday, could be Facebook, right? On Wednesday, could be YouTube. On Thursday, could be TikTok. On Friday, LinkedIn. On Saturday, you talk on Clubhouse. On Sunday, you talk on Clubhouse, right? So you can create that little system where it's the same video but you're sending it to four, five, six different platforms and that helps you not get overwhelmed because you've already processed it, you've already scheduled it in advance, right? So you, you create that schedule, 90 days of content, while that's being executed and it's just going at that point, you have, there's nothing you need to do because you have the scheduler for maybe LinkedIn and Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, right? You've, you've got all the, the scheduling in order. You, you can use certain platforms that are free that can help you um, schedule your content. You know, like Facebook has a creator studio for Facebook and Instagram, so that saves you time. YouTube has a creator studio where you can schedule stuff. TikTok, I don't know. LinkedIn has a separate platform that you can use to schedule your content. You could probably use it on TikTok as well. That's how you save a whole lot of time. You don't have to watch your content. You don't have to 
you know, wait for the likes to come in in the comments. Just let it go. Let it go. Once it's out there, you let it go. During those 90 days of execution, you rinse and repeat. Start recording in those 90 days, and then you'll have an additional, you know, time frame to start your 90, 90, 90 day rule process going. So what ends up happening is if you get 90 different videos or 90 pieces of content, that 90 can turn into 180 easily. So now you have, you've created 90 separate pieces of video, right? Or content value, whether it's the written word, a post, a video, podcast, audio, whatever it is, it's 90 separate pieces of content that can get reposted and repurposed four and six times over. So being conservative, 90 can become 180, right? So during those 90 days of execution that your pre-existing material is already going out, you're now recording again. You're now recording again, producing new content, you're now giving yourself that those other 90 days because your 90 pieces of content became 180. So it's actually 180 days straight. Every single day you're posting something on these different platforms, right? That you can choose from. So that gives you that 90 days that you need to plan, schedule, and process. And then right as you run out of content, boom, you're executing on that new content that you recorded, you edited, you uploaded, scheduled out, bam. So now you're, you're batching, essentially. You're batching your content, you're saving time, your income begins to rise over time. It might take six months, might take a year. But the fact that you didn't have to burn yourself out, you still have your nine to five job and you do this on the side, it doesn't even feel like a hustle. It just feels like you're operating in kingdom format, kingdom protocol, and you're just moving forward. So that's how I would operate in the midst of a crash or a crisis, knowing that if the market tanks, when the market tanks, and if I have to take a pay cut or I lose my job, I have something that I'm building that could potentially save me, right? Not guaranteed could potentially save me, right? Here are the platforms. Last thing is to give and invest in myself only. This is huge. If you give, you receive. If you do it from the heart, tenfold return, 10x return, okay? 10x return. But the other thing is, when it, in regards to investing, if I choose to only invest in myself, I have to cut out all the noise. So coming back to when I was making 35K a year, I'm not buying gold, silver, crypto, Robinhood, investing in Robinhood stock, GameStop, AMC, Carnival Cruise Lines. I'm not investing in uh, Forex and not trying to start any type of um, get rich quick and you know do this, do that and send my money here and start an IBC. I'm not doing none of that yet. I'm redirecting all cash flow back to me. I'm going to invest in books, courses, education, coaching, mentoring, networking, access to information, sales, right? What can I sell? What can I produce in the marketplace? Right? How can I bring value to the marketplace and go from there? The other thing is knowing that at 35K a year salary, if I have a crystal ball and I know the market crash is coming and I could potentially lose my job, my thinking now becomes, how do I get access to the CEO of my company and get that promotion? I need to be thinking, how can I add more value to the company that I'm at? How can I grow? What job can I transition to now that pays more? How do I make myself fireproof? Where, where the CEO 
the managers, the CFOs, the owners of the company will not fire me because they need me because the market is crashing. They need me. How do I go from a liability to an asset in a company? That's the mindset I need to have. If I got the crystal ball, I know the market crash is coming. I watch the videos. I see the marketplace. I see what's going on. Crash is coming. What do I do? What mindset do I need to have? I cannot stay here at 35K a year. I'm a liability. I have to ask myself, okay, in addition to starting a, my side business and having something that I own personally, how can I increase my income? So if I know the market is coming, I'm not even worried about saving money, investing money in the stock market and, and this and that. All that gets canceled out my mindset becomes 10x. How do I expand? Okay, because it's a lot easier to make 10,000 than it is to save 10,000. It's a lot easier to make 10,000 than to invest 10,000 in uh, GameStop, AMC, Carnival Cruise Lines, and wait for the rate of return to come. It's a lot easier for me to go out and sell myself. It's a lot easier to ask my CEO, my manager, for a $10,000 raise. It's a lot easier. A lot. Okay? Because you are becoming extremely valuable. You're switching from liability to an asset yourself because you're investing in yourself because you're reading books, you're obtaining information and knowledge in the marketplace so that you can deliver and get paid for your time and efforts as a kingdom citizen. So that's it. That's my lesson. 